إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ولا نظير له ولا مثال له شهادة تنجي قائلها من عذاب النار وأشهد أن سيدنا وسندنا ومولانا محمد محمدنا عبده وحبيبه ورسوله نور النور وبدر البدور صلى الله تعالى عليه وعلى آله وأولاده وأزواجه وخلفائه الراشدين المرشدين المهديين من بعده ووزرائه الكاملين في عهده خصوصا منهم على ساداتنا أبي بكر وعمر وعثمان وعلي وعلى بقية الصحابة والقرابة والتابعين والذين اتبعوهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد فيا عباد الله اتقوا الله وأطيعوه إن الله مع الذين اتقوا والذين هم محسنون يقول الله تبارك وتعالى في كتابه المجيد بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون وقال تعالى إن الذين قالوا ربنا الله ثم استقاموا فلا خوف عليهم ولا هم يحزنون أولئك أصحاب الجنة خالدين فيها جزاء بما كانوا يعملون وقال تعالى وصية لنبيه عيسى ابن مريم عليه الصلاة والسلام وأوصاني بالصلاة والزكاة ما دمت حيا ما دمت حيا صدق الله وصدق رسول الله عن أبي أيوب الأنصاري رضي الله تعالى عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم من صام رمضان ثم أتبعه ستا من شوال كان كصيام الدهر رواه تلميذي وعن عائشة رضي الله تعالى عنها قالت سئل رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أي الأعمال أحب إلى الله فقال أدوامها وإن قل رواه البخاري صدق الله وصدق رسول الله ألا إن أحسن الكلام وأبلغ النظام كلام الله الملك العزيز العلام كما قال الله تبارك وتعالى في نظم الكلام وإذا قرئ القرآن فاستمعوا له وأنصتوا لعلكم ترحموا Indeed all praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the first and the last the only true provider and cherisher, the only sustainer, the only giver of life, the only giver of provisions, the ultimate guide, the subtle, the gentle, the kind and the generous, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We praise him forever, for eternity, as he is eternal, the first and the last, as I said. We send salawat and salam upon his final prophet and messenger, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his pure family, 
noble companions and every believer until the very last day. Last year, on this day, we were fasting. It was the blessed month of Ramadan. And if I or anyone told any one of us today, this morning, that you have to fast, we will probably put a very tough fight against it. No, I don't have to fast. I don't feel like it. I actually feel like doing something different. I feel like indulging myself to the limit. As much as I can take in and as much as I can do, I just feel like doing all that much. Whereas in reality, you could have fasted already a few days of Shawwal, according to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in that hadith which I read, that Abu Ayyub al-Ansari, radiyallahu ta'ala anhu, narrated to us, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, any one of us who was blessed and given the tawfiq to fast the month of Ramadan, and even those who are exempt, but their intention was to fast if they didn't have that impediment or something that's preventing them from observing the actual physical act of fasting, if they follow that up by fasting additional six days of this month of Shawwal, and today is the eighth of Shawwal, it would count for them as if they fasted the whole year. Subhanallah. So when I said Allah is very kind, generous, this hadith confirms his generosity and kindness. Who will pay you for doing some work for them for six days, the whole year's wage? There are no rich companies and employers that are that kind and generous who will pay you like that. And even though Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded us to do things, it's again for our own benefit and good. When are we going to understand that every wasiyah, every will, every bequest that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has laid down to previous generations and our own ummah in terms of obligations and recommended acts is for our own benefit. We, as individuals, benefit tremendously from every day of fast we do. We may not be able to feel it instantly, straight away, but we do benefit on all layers of our being. And likewise, for each prayer that we offer with ikhlas, purity of intention, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we get transformed from within. We get cleansed, purified. We draw closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who is our ultimate aim and goal, his pleasure, his ridwan, and being conscious of him, remembering him at all times. Likewise, every act of charity we do will do us so much tremendous good. Some scholars believe that generosity is the essence of taqwa, not necessarily persistence in worship, what I'm trying to say today, but that too is important. So is the other side of it, staying away from prohibited things. Or this mighty lesson that I hope we all learned from this year's Ramadan, the ability to abstain from things, the ability to be in charge of your of yourself in general sense. Just the ability to stay calm and composed is such a mighty benefit. It's a weapon. It's a very powerful weapon that you and I need to stay on the right path and to spiritually ascend. And that's what we want. So every year Allah blesses us by sending us a special guest, Ramadan. And then through his messenger, he showed us many ways. And he said, these are like special kind of divine blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala pours over you. Make most of them. Now Ramadan is over. 
And those of you who listened to my khutbah a few weeks ago, did I not say, let us see where we are one week from Ramadan. This is today. We are now one week from Ramadan. Where do you stand today, today? As opposed to last Friday or Thursday night. And you will see the difference. But you will also see some good, glad tidings, good news. Maybe there are certain things that stayed on with you. So the training was not fruitless after all. Some things became part of you. Stayed firmly rooted in your DNA. They are part of your personality. And what did I say apart from that? I said Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so kind and generous and he's so wise, all knowing. He knows what's best for us because he created us. He actually decided to create us from nothing. And he knows how we function. He also knows what we incline towards and what we withdraw from. What we like and what we dislike, we don't even know sometimes. We like things so much, but they're really bad for us. And contrary. But Allah knows everything about us. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keeps sending a special invite for you and I as his creatures. Ibadullah. Allah's servants. Allah's slaves. Allah's beloved dear worshippers. He gives us a special invite and the most obvious one is the month of Ramadan. And he opens his doors of mercy and grace and guidance really wide for us. And he encourages us to walk through them and taste the sweetness of faith. And see the light of guidance and sharpen our vision. And we do manage to do that. When the month of Ramadan is over, the doors don't close, my brothers and sisters. The doors of Allah's mercy and favors are constantly opened for you and I. Allah wants you to go in more and more, even after the month of Ramadan, until the next one. And then in the next Ramadan, you will discover some more treasures in that beautiful place. But he wants you to carry on going forward, upwards. And that's what we call istiqama, being firm and steadfast on the path. And no one, I believe, understood this notion better than our beloved messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And no one understood the danger of, na'udhu billah, going astray, or stagnating means being in status quo, just not doing anything, just like being the same, or regressing, going backwards, than the messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Hence, he prayed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala more or less on daily basis. Ya muthabbit al-qulub, thabbit qalbi ala deenik, wa ta'atik, wa mahabbatik, wa ridha. These are his words, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. O the one who makes our hearts firm and steadfast, make my heart firm on your deen, on your religion, on obedience towards you. And that is the highest, perhaps, degree of sabr. When you are so persistent and patient in constantly praising Allah, singing his praises, glorifying him, worshipping him, praying to him, giving things from what you think you need and like for Allah's sake. You do that and you continuously keep doing that. That does so much good for you and I. And that is why Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha narrated another hadith beside the one I read. She said, when the Prophet sallallahu إذا عمل رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم عملا أثبته أي داوم عليه That's what it means. She said, when the Messenger of Allah used to do some kind of act, whether it's prayer or fasting or making dua or adhkar or washing his clothes, mending them, helping neighbors, caressing children, whatever it is that he did, he would basically do it to the best of his ability 
and will make it a practice that is quite frequent and regular for him. Even if it was something little, and that's why he said, alayhi salatu was salam, la tahqiranna, don't belittle any act of kindness or goodness, it doesn't matter how small it is. You just don't know how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take it from you. And it's very much linked to your heart, the purity of your intention, sincerity. It could be something you think trivial, but actually will cause your admission to Jannah or cause total uh, salvation for you or forgiveness of sins. You just don't know. But for that reason, we hope like this. Maybe this Ramadan was the first time we understood that Quran rejuvenates us. It's Rabi'a Qulubina. It brings us new energies, makes us stronger, empowers us. Maybe this time is the first time we understood that Quran itself enlightens our body. But I mean every cell. You know, your skin, your bones, even your hairs, everything, major limbs, organs, everything. Maybe it's the first time that you understood Quran actually relieves you of stresses, anxiety, etc. It's soothing you. It's a shifa, cure, remedy. And you felt that, and you felt nice and lighter and better. Now you understand that is the the remedy that you are after, that you need. Why would you abandon such thing then? Why would you leave Quran? Why wouldn't you continuously engage yourself with it? And maybe after this Ramadan, some of you have started your second khatim and will finish it in the next couple of months or so, inshallah. And then we'll go again another one. And, uh, so that's uh, an example of thing that can stay on with you. And that means that's positive good news for you. Another example I'll tell you, simple. It could be that previously when you used to dress up, you wouldn't really pay gratitude to Allah for giving you enough money to buy a new garment or giving you enough money to, to wash it, just to iron it, to have enough money to pay for the electricity so you can iron your shirt or your cloak. And before you put it on, you acknowledge that. You praised Allah. You thanked him and you knew very well that he is the one who gave it to you, who provided you with that. And you prayed in the prophetic way, which means, you, I praise you, Allah, for giving me this garment. And once I have worn it, torn it apart, and it's, get, it's got old and I can't really wear it anymore, patched, or it's got holes in it. I know you are the one who will give me a new one, <laughs> another one that I can put on and cover my the parts of my body I don't want anyone else to see. That's an example. Another example is maybe you love coming to your local masjid nowadays. And I'll finish with two things. There was a man who said, I didn't feel so good before Ramadan. The month of Ramadan came, he took part in everything he could with his local community and he said afterwards, now I feel better. <laughs> So if you and I feel better now, that's also good news. And another gentleman said, what is going to happen to me if I commit to come 20 days in a row? And Ramadan is like 30 days in a row fasting. But he said, 20 days in a row to Fajr prayer. And maybe so many of you managed to do that in Ramadan for 20 days. But in a row is important. Day in and day out. He said, the Sheikh said, well, please do that. Fulfill your promise and you will see at the end of it. He said, okay, I'll commit and I'll come to pray 20 days in a row in my local masjid. And after 20 days, the Sheikh calls him and says, okay, how do you feel now? He said, subhanAllah, there's nothing more beautiful than this. I feel I'll never give up on this. That's how he felt. And I had a conversation like that with one member of this congregation. And I told him, your persistence on coming to this, you know, Fajr prayer or any prayer that you are regular, some people come for Asr every day, I noticed, or Zuhr, whatever it is, but you do it with persistence, steadfastness, istiqama. That is making a huge difference for you. And shaitan is really afraid of you. I'm just telling you, He's, he can't stop you cannot do anything for you on the way. You'll try, but he cannot. With that level of support and sincerity, Allah is on your side. 
And when that happens, لا خوف عليهم ولا هم يحزنون. There is no fear nor grief on them. And they will, inshallah ta'ala, succeed. And finally, I conclude this little sermon by a dua, which is, I hope, a hadith, a, a prayer of our beloved messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And it's in relation to Ramadan, really, because this is the one thing I would like us to think deeply about and try to implement, really, in our lives. And it's a very important lesson, in my opinion. Namely, our beloved messenger, I believe, prayed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because we do everything we can to our best ability. But in the end of the day, we rely on Allah and only on Allah. And we know that he's the only one who can grant us tawfiq, the ability to persist, to actually accomplish a deed. It's only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then even just not doing deeds, fasting and praying, who will accept it from you? Only Allah. And who will reward you for it? Only Allah. And who will keep it all going and being better and more beautiful? Only Allah and no one but Allah. So the Prophet prayed to Allah like this. He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Allahumma rahamni bi tarkil ma'asi abadan ma abqaytani. O Allah, I plead to your mercy that you enable me to stay away from all that is prohibited, sinful, as long as you keep me alive. Allahumma rahamni bi tarkil ma'asi abadan ma abqaytani. وَارْزُقْنِي أَنْ أَتَكَلَّفَ مَا لَا يَعْنِينِي O Allah, bestow upon me the ability not to engage myself in matters that don't concern me. Like English people say, why are you getting involved? It's none of your business. Putting your nose in everything. You don't need to do that. مِنْ حُسْنِ إِسْلَامِ الْمَرْءِ تَرْكُهُ مَا لَا يَعْنِي Good Islam is like staying away from things that don't concern you. But it comes from Allah. So if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prevents you, enables you to stay away from things that are useless for you, it can, in fact can be detrimental for you, harmful. It's a big bounty from Allah. Remember that. وَرْزُقْنِي حُسْنَ النَّظَرِ فِيمَا يُرْضِيكَ عَنِّي The last statement. Uh, likewise, give me the ability, yeah, enable me, to engage myself with those things that please you. And I actually get addicted to prayers and charity and fasting. And I get addicted to studying the, your messenger's beloved seerah. I get addicted to doing salawat on Fridays and other days upon your final messenger and beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa This is exactly the prayer that you and I need. We need to continuously understand it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is in charge of our hearts. It is Allah who gave us Ramadan and Shawwal and two Eids a year. And it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who with his utmost grace and mercy can keep us away from haram. And can us, he can make us do beneficial, useful things to ourselves and our community and the ummah as a whole. And it is only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who can make us like wholesome, good, praiseworthy things. And it is only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who can instill in us that sense of shame and modesty that we need or taste of things that are not useful to us so that we, by default, don't feel like indulging ourselves in things that could be so detrimental for our ruh. I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us a deeper understanding of our sacred tradition. I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to enable us to be firm and steadfast in acts of worship that we intend and wish and want and love to do for his sake. And I also pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept from us all of our good deeds. And I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us our mistakes and our shortcomings. وأستغفر الله العظيم لي ولكم فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم الحمد لله 
الحمد لله الحمد لله حمد الكاملين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين تعظيما لنبيه وتكريما لفخامة شأن شرف الصفيه فقد قال عز وجل قائلا مخبرا وآمرا إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم وبارك وأنعم وتفضل وتكرم وتحنن على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما صليت وسلمت وباركت وتحننت وتفضلت وتكرمت وأنعمت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد اللهم ارحمنا بترك المعاصي أبدا ما أبقيتنا وارحمنا أن نتكلف ما لا يعنينا وارزقنا حسن النظر فيما يرضيك عنا برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم ربنا برحمتك نستغيث أصلح لنا شأننا كله ولا تكلنا إلى أنفسنا طرفة عين يا رحيم يا رحمن قلوبنا بين إسبعيك الكريمتين تقلبها كيف تشاء فثبت قلوبنا على دينك وطاعتك ومحبتك ورضاك يا رب العالمين وأرحم الراحمين سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين آمين إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون وأقيم الصلاة